Hey there, internet friends. Welcome to another Patreon early access episode of That Nerdy Site Show, a weekly podcast where the team members from That Nerdy Site get together to talk about our lives and all of the nerdy things we love about them. I'm your host, Trevor Starkey, and joining me for this month's episode, uh, this is the month of, it's going live July, so it'll, you'll be hearing this mostly in uh, August, early access, or September if you are a non-patron after that. Uh, but joining me for this month, we have Cameron Abbott. How you doing, Cameron? Hey, what's going on, nerds? What is going on? And we have Frank Pisani. How you doing, Frank? Living the dream. Living the dream. Frank, I want to give you a, a thank you uh, and a shout out to uh, for holding down the fort while I was on vacation a couple week, couple ep- regular episodes ago. Um, I, uh, I enjoyed listening to uh, listening back to part of it after, uh, as you guys sent it to me to edit uh, and getting to the bit where <laughs> where Jazz literally popped open a bottle of champagne <laughs> to celebrate Dad being out of the house or whatever. So, uh, thank you guys for uh, for holding that down as you often do when uh, when I take a week out. A um, little bit of general housekeeping for this show and the site in general. If you like what you hear, please remember to like, subscribe, rate, review the podcast with your friends, and, uh, and share it everywhere you can if you are so inclined. Uh, and if you are hearing this after, you know, the month early access, uh, if you can support us on Patreon, please do, and you get early access. You get to hear these kinds of episodes a month before anybody else. Um, so shout out to all of our Patreon supporters, uh, including our monthly Patreon producers, Pam and Bev Larson, Sherry Starkey, thank you to my mom, Teresa Wilson, uh, Wilkinson, thank you to Logan's mom, uh, and some schmuck named Trevor Starkey, thank you to <laughs> that loser. Uh, and, and Pam and Bev, thank you to my uh, aunt and late grandmother for uh, kind of their continued and ongoing support of uh, the the fun stuff we're doing here. Um so yeah, for for these monthly episodes, if this is your first one, we just kind of instead of focusing on like, hey, here's what we've been up to, or here's what we've been like playing or watching or whatever kind of nerdy things we're doing. These tend to center around a theme, and uh, I just got back from a uh, like a a much needed vacation away, uh, and and you know much risky, very risky vacation away. Admittedly, uh, I, I flew out to Sacramento for about. Uh, uh, five or six days, uh, go catch up with an old friend of mine who just moved out there for law school. Uh, and, uh, and in doing so, it made me like hyper aware and hypersensitive to a lot of the things that I'm just like missing that I don't even think about, um, in, uh, in the COVID era here now that we're, you know, four and a half, five months into everything. Uh, so I thought it might be cathartic to just kind of sit down and kind of talk out some of those things with you guys. Um, so that's kind of the, the topic of this month's episode is what we're missing during COVID. And uh, the one that really, I think, kind of sparked this and kicked it off for me was my friend was kind enough to pick me up at the airport. And uh, as I came down the uh, like the escalator to, toward baggage claim in, uh, in Sacramento Airport, uh, she met me and gave me like a big old hug. And I was l- like, I, in the, it, immediately I was like, I don't think I've touched another person in four months uh, since this all started. Cause like, even when I've done like socially distanced stuff with my family, we've all done like air hugs and, and we've all like kept our distance. So apart from, you know, maybe exchanging money or, or food or something with a delivery driver, I'm pretty sure that was like the first like physical contact I'd had. And, and it was like surreal to think about that and to think about how long it had been. Um, and, uh, and it was just very like, oh, like even, you know, giving my, my, you know, folks a hug or, you know, going and catching up and grabbing like a drink with a friend or something and giving them a hug um, at the end of the evening. It was just like, like I, I didn't realize how much like that, w- how, how nice that was. Um, and so that was, that was definitely like, it broke my brain for, for a little bit uh, as uh, at the start of that trip. So, um, so that's one, one thing I've certainly been uh, missing a lot. Uh, how about, how about you, Frank, anything? Uh, I mean, I know, I know, um, I know one of yours that we were talking about a little bit right before we started. So uh, you want to tell us that one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things I know I definitely miss and, and it even kind of goes into what you were saying there too, is like, I, I just missed like, going to going out to like bars uh especially like here in austin there's just like tons of them and there's a bunch of different really cool ones and it was always like a thing i would do at least 
uh, like once a week, if not really like multiple times a week, you just get together with friends and different groups of people and just go to a bar and just kind of have a drink or two and just hang out. And a lot of the places here are like these outdoor areas and like there's like games or other stuff to do and like really good food. And then that's just like, I, I just like definitely missed all that. I definitely missed like the social interaction. And of course there's like hugs and stuff and like even just like the food aspect too. Like a lot of those food trucks and everything are shut down right now and like, uh, I, I miss all of it. Like it was, it was all just such like an amazing experience all the time. And especially like even, uh, going into even like the work thing a little bit too, like after work, a bunch of us would always go to this one bar down the street all the time. And you just get like these, uh, like barbecue brisket nachos and just sit there out on the patio. And like, we would all just like vent about work and shit and just have some drinks. And it was a really like good time. And I think it was a good way to like de-stress. And like, I really miss that. Like, especially being work from home, like you don't get to see people, you don't get to talk to them. And then you just like, don't have anywhere to like vent. It's just like all kind of builds up, you know, if you guys follow me there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's certainly like, that's another one kind of on my list is, uh, you know, I'm not like, I'm not a crazy social butterfly, but I did have a few friends that I would like regularly go and, and, you know, we'd catch a movie or we'd go and grab drinks or something with cam in particular being one where cam and i at least a few weeks back we went and like caught up over some chipotle and stuff uh, or we, like we we caught up at a chipotle but like i had already eaten and and so we didn't even like eat uh we just kind of like caught up and visited again we, socially we distanced up, and everything yeah, socially distanced for sure yeah um uh and, and so even that like like but you know regularly meeting up with cam and grabbing like portillas or something here in town um was you know it is a you know regular occurrence that certainly also uh, like i miss just having you know a social outing and like i said i've done the occasional like go to my parents house and like we'll sit out uh, on their in their backyard and like everybody's kind of like six feet apart eating our eating our food and catching up and talking about our days or weeks or whatever uh or just months because time has no meaning now and um uh and and even that is just it, it's it's such a rarity, especially when um, Arizona cases of COVID like really spiked a few weeks ago. My sister, yeah. who had very much been like really reticent to even doing like the the family distanced stuff, um, uh, when when Arizona cases went through the roof, my sister basically was like, "Hey, I already wasn't comfortable doing this any, uh, so I'm just gonna not do it now." Um, so heads up, like I'm I'm not doing the family lunches for a while. And admittedly, like I kind of joined suit and i was like yeah i like i'm i'm not as concerned about her as as about everything as her um but also you know why risk it especially because uh, like the last thing i want to do is put my parents in you know more jeopardy my dad who's had you know strokes and, and mental health issues like i don't want to you know potentially complicate things for him so uh so yeah it's we we have not um or at least like as a family we've not done it in really like probably the last month um and it it certainly you know sucks um uh but it's it's like i would sooner hopefully they stay okay and we can do this when the fucking world gets its shit to well, not even the fucking world the fucking united states gets its shit together <laughs> um and stops being filled by and run by like petulant baby children who are like hey don't wear a mask um and uh, and we can you know come out on the other end and do this. That was another thing. Um, sitting at the airport uh, was the first like really prolonged time I've had to deal with a mask. Um, but I wore uh, like I wore the mask all through security, save like they had me pull it down to you know check my ID or whatever. But like all through security th through the whole flight, didn't take it off any of that stuff. And like yeah, it was like warm and not the most comfortable thing, but also. I'm an adult and I fucking dealt with it. So, so like, and, and to their credit, like, so did everybody else that I saw at Sky Harbor as well as uh, the Sacramento airport. Um, so like the, I think we see the cases of people being like petulant baby children and it's probably, it's a probably a distorted view because there probably aren't as many of those people as we think about on social media because Hey, for the, you know, hundred of us that were flying out to Sacramento that day, like none of us threw a fit or anything. And we just kind of like all went about our day. So nobody's taking like film footage of that kind of stuff. Um, and really like in, in the whole time traveling, the thing I ended up being like most anxious about 
was we would go on like dog walks in in the park and in the open air environment people were a lot less like uh sticklers for the masks like me and and my my uh, my friend we were constantly wearing our masks um anytime we were out and about but there were a lot more people that like we just kind of had to keep extra distance from because they weren't so um so that that was like the especially as somebody who like has just largely stayed to myself for four months seeing that many people out there and not wearing masks i was like why just wear the mask just everybody just put the masks on like I get it that you're in a park and there's open air and everything and plenty of ventilation, but also fucking wear a mask. Just wear the mask. Ah, anyway. Do you guys, um, uh, do you guys yeah. have the, the mask uh, mandate to wear in back in Arizona? Or I know you were in California there, but like, cause here, if you don't have one and you're in public, you'll get fined. And then they increase the fine to like over a thousand dollars now, I think. I don't, I, I've I've lost track of where Arizona's at on this. I know Ducey for the longest time was mostly like an anti-masker kind of guy. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's at this point, like especially when COVID stuff spiked. I think he got on board, but I I don't think there's like a a fine enforcement kind of thing behind it at this point. I think there's... it's still just like strongly recommend you wearing a mask. Yeah, so the state guidelines are strongly recommended. Um counties like basically every county has instituted a mandate from the like county officers as well as the sheriff yeah and a lot of the cities have too i know yeah so the city so some of a lot of the cities have um the counties have so there is like enforcement that can be put into place Mm -hmm. but businesses won't let you in if you don't have a mask on yeah that's that's, there's been yeah i've seen a ton of those signs i have been in like i went and picked up like a, a sandwich from jersey mike's or something and the guy in front of me was just like he'd clearly never been into a jersey mike's and also wasn't wearing a mask so he's asking a ton <laughs> of questions and stuff and i was just like like i i just kind of like trying to esp to the employees and being like hey like i will totally you know back you up if you kick this guy out because he's not wearing a mask like do it man do just do it i will i like he was, he got to the, the front, uh, or like he got to pay and they were like, okay, it's going to be like $8 for his, you know, uh, what, eight inch sandwich or whatever. Uh, and he was like, the guy told me $3. And I, and I was just what? like, no, no, he didn't. He, he gave you the option of like the mini, which is like a three inch sandwich that would have been, you know, cheaper. But no, he did not tell you that this sandwich that you're getting was three. And I was just like, ah, and that's like the only guy that I've seen not wearing a mask. Um, so shout out to all the places that yeah I've I've been to and have been basically like enforcing the mask um, stuff. Yeah, because we had kind of the same thing here where like places before the order went into effect, uh, places started like doing that where they like they started mandating masks and they would like kick you out or like you know kind of uh, give you trouble if you didn't have one, which is good. Um, and then it was kind of like pulling teeth to get them to actually put something in place. But eventually our governor put in like a statewide mandate. And I literally like one day I was uh, I think I was playing The Last of Us and I got like the emergency alert. And it literally says like this is going into effect tomorrow at midnight. Like everybody has to wear a mask if you're in public or you will be fined. Yeah, the um, uh, one of the other um instances i've seen i guess actually there was one guy on uh, on the flight to sacramento that like was sitting in the in the row of in front of me and and like to southwest's credit for example they um like they aren't fully booked or anything so like they ha- sold seats so that everybody uh would have like a middle seat empty um so you were never gonna uh, unless you were like traveling as a family or something like that nobody had to sit in the middle seat so there was always like some distance and spacing in there um still not six feet obviously Um, but also again like most people were wearing the masks there was one guy on the flight out there that took his mask down and was talking to like the person who he was clearly like flying with um just like the whole time and i just kind of like would occasionally look up from the book i was reading and just kind of stare daggers at his face just being like fucking just put the fucking mask back on man just just put it back on and just waiting for like the like the the um the flight staff to just come and be like hey sir you have to put your back your mask back on they never did and i was just like and also i have been to a subway near me uh picking up an order and the guy behind the counter had not like did not was not wearing a mask and i was like 
<laughs> like, so when I got the like, hey, Subway is what wants you to do a survey and how do we do kind of thing, I basically put in there, I was like, hey, bad because this guy was not wearing a mask. And per your COVID-19 response on your website, like that's the number one thing that those employees are supposed to be doing. And they reached back out and were like, oh, he, well, he wasn't supposed to be like front facing. I'm like, that, that doesn't matter. He should have been wearing the fucking mask, even if he was supposed to just be back in the kitchen or whatever, he's baking prepping- bread. If he's exactly. prepping food, like, he should definitely be having a yeah. mask on. Yeah, it's like yeah, saying he didn't exactly. have gloves because he was meant to be washing yeah. dishes or, or doing whatever in the yeah. back, like moving yeah. stuff around to like stock. Like, so yeah, fuck that particular subway. Um, I, I'm not going. Back you, to them you're gonna soon. put them on blast here. Oh yeah, yeah. The 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 particular subway that is like a block from my house. Fuck them. Fuck those guys. <laughs> um, on McDowell uh, Road, um, for, for you know the ten people who listen to this episode. <laughs> Two of whom are like my mom and aunt, maybe. Um, so. But then they'll know not to go there, though. Exactly. Yeah, they 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 will know to not go to that subway. Um, so yeah, how about you, Cam? Anything uh, in particular you're missing? Alcohol. <laughs> Alcohol. You can drink that um, at home. I mean, yeah. Not I. Not me. I. I. So I live in a dry house. Like there's no alcohol mm. allowed in the house that I live in. Okay, my, I my 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 brother-in-law and my sister are um are like they like they neither of them drink they're basically mm-hmm. teetotalers and then on top of that there's like three little kids in the house and so like booze is just like not an option um and like don't get me wrong like i think about it every time i walk into the circle k to get something i'm like maybe i should take some home and it's like nah, i don't want to have that conversation you don't want to be, be the guy that has you don't want to be the guy that has to like drink that in his car or like hide it in there. <laughs> I mean, it's not even like that. It's like, I know if I like brought something in, it would be like just a discussion. Like there would have to be a discussion. And honestly, I don't really want to have to deal with that kind of like level of not drama, but level of like serious conversation when we're already like cabin fever was already at a high pitch just a couple weeks ago. So yeah, like, like it's been like, I miss, I miss going out with Trevor. I miss going to um, movie theaters, which is like, I just Mm -hmm. started going back to see movies in theaters not too long before the, the pandemic outbreak. Um, Interestingly Mm -hmm. enough, like I remember when I was flying to and from PAX, I wore a mask because I was concerned. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's, that's definitely something I thought about. I mean, like even flying is something that I missed while I was doing it. And like, it was incredibly surreal how quiet Sky Harbor was um all things considered like it clearly they're they're doing very like low numbers business wise but just being there and seeing it in person and and like just how few people were around like they had t- two of the security gates completely closed at sky harbor two of the four Gosh, um, and really? usually usually all four of them in terminal four are you know full and it'll take you you know 10 15 minutes to get through security and stuff two of them closed and doing like social distanced stuff at least to get to tsa past like the them checking your id and stuff then everybody was like well hey, we gotta crunch up to get to the conveyor belts i was like we don't really guys you could still just stay far away from from me like back the fuck off um but yeah even that was like surreal just flying again but yeah like the whole time i was thinking about how how when we went to pax in uh late february and and, and flew back in march you you were like ahead of the curve on this and been wearing your mask and i remember thinking like what a dumbass I was to like, I didn't give you shit for it, but like, I thought about giving you shit for it um, (laughs) while we were, while we were there in Boston. Um, And like, I think back on that, I'm like, good call Trevor on not giving him shit because yeah, he was definitely smarter than the rest of us were at that time. Cause we absolutely should have been like more prepared and cautious. And, and the fact that like, I wore a mask on the floor. Into something. Like I, I was exactly, wearing yeah. a mask on the floor and like, I got interviewed by a, a radio dude and he's like, yep. You didn't realize I was media as well. And so he was like, hey, yeah, like, what's your... I was like, yeah, listen, like, eh, they're saying, CDC saying it's, like, flu-like symptoms, so the best way possible for me to, like, not worry about this is, A, don't give my germs to somebody else, and B, don't, like, let myself open mouth inhale other people's germs. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, I did not get sick from that PAX, which is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, no, and uh, I mean, I, did, I didn't either. And, and like two packs is credit and everything like, yeah, they, they weren't like asking or enforcing masks or anything. But like pretty much every booth had hand sanitizer all over the place. And so, every like, like escalator and like everything yeah. like that. Like I, 
I can at least appreciate about this that I know, like you're saying, they didn't weren't enforcing masks or anything, but I did feel like they elevated the cleanliness of packs way more than I've ever seen, and I hope we can just maintain mm-hmm. that going forward. Yeah, very true. That's <laughs> it's, like I remember. I remember thinking about how I was gonna tweet out a dumb joke about all of these, you know, very basic Mortal Kombat cosplayers, <laughs> um, and and like even thinking back on that, I'm like. God, I just I was not taking it 150,000 deaths seriously, um, which is you know where we're at basically as of this recording, um, and it's just like it's it it I'm increasingly angry at how we could have managed this so much better and just didn't because of incompetency and and stubborn individualism that exists in this country. Like, and listen, just... man, I I knew this was gonna happen. I knew this yep. was going to happen. I called it. I was like, yep. people aren't going to listen people because this is the same problem we see with the flu every year. People were like, well, what about how many people die from the flu? It's like the people who die from the flu are the same people who are going to die from this, which is people who don't listen. When the CDC sends out a flu warning, people aren't listening about flu season notifications. And like as somebody who like I'm not immunocompromised by any search of the imagination, but I am very like I do often get sick. So I do take precautions. And I am careful. And, like, I saw what was going to happen with this, and I saw how, like, there, like, the government response was basically nothing. The CDC was saying, hey, be very careful. But at the same time, the CDC is a toothless dog unless the government gives it its teeth. Um, yeah. And, like, I already knew about it with how the president had, um, not just a strain of politics here, but, like, in 2018 disbanded the, uh, like, the task force that was built after like the response to swine flu when we realized how devastating these diseases could take a toll on us as like both our health as a population and the health of our economy um like people people were told like nurses and doctors were told not to tell people they actually contracted swine flu because it would spread a panic about it and there was a concern that people were overhyping it and even then like some people got it and never recovered from it like i know some people who got it found out later that they had it and they're like well why wasn't i told about it and the person who ran their test like it was usually done through a clinic or something but like there's a lot of this problem in like stubborn individualism is one thing but i really have to say it's um there there's about a 20 like there's a good chance that 25 percent of this country is not wearing a mask because Mm -hmm. they do not believe this is the same 25% who um, believe in alien abductions, that believe in Bigfoot, that, like, they are they are the 20, like, they are the quarter of America that, like, freedom allows to live their lives, like, the, the freedoms we have let them live their lives, and it's at times like this that they can become a danger to the rest of society, but, like, it's just, it's a scary thing, man. It's a scary thing, especially with, like, um... The co-founder of Turning Point USA and then Herman Cain both died in the last 24 hours. Yeah. And it's like, I feel like... While, I, while their accounts were dismissing coronavirus. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, I don't get me wrong, like, it's incredibly ironic. And I do find humor and irony. But at the same time, I was reading through some, like, some people who were close, like, a person who was close to uh, Herman Cain who was this young young gal right out of like right out of college got a job as like a social media person like social media community manager and like talks about like the um, like her experiences with him and like you know and it's like okay, like at the end of the day I don't think anybody deserves to die from a disease like this especially with how this disease kills you um cuz you also die alone like, you're not allowed to have any, like, physical contact mm-hmm. with anyone. You yep. have to say goodbye to your loved ones over teleconference. If you even get to, if you're even, if you even are healthy enough to even say goodbye. So, like, yeah. I, I, mean, I don't, I don't pity, I do not, we, I do not hate anybody who, like, or rather than who say this, if you treated this with disdain and dismissal, like, that's on you, and that's on your conscience, and that's what you're going to have to deal with. But at the same time, like, I'm, like, I may not be the like the biggest mourner of your death, but I'm also not going to like dance on your grave. Yeah, I'm. I like that's that's where I'm at. I like I'm not going to dance on his grave, but like I am going to one thousand percent scoff and look with a side eye at Herman Cain going to the rally in Tulsa, 
bragging about how it wasn't going to you people weren't going to have to wear masks and bragging about how he wasn't going to wear a mask getting coronavirus from that event and then dying as a result of the complications in that like that was a completely self-inflicted gunshot wound um that just took you know a month to kill him basically yeah, and it's like I'm... you like if if you're really the smart guy that you were trying to pr- present yourself as like that was entirely preventable and like you're a fucking moron for not doing what you could have done to prevent it. So I, I think um, it's okay to be angry at these people for not yeah. not paying and, attention and to it. But anybody like, that yeah. yeah he exposed to it as a result or fucking uh, what Representative Gomert um, <laughs> showing up at his office to tell people, hey, I've been diagnosed with coronavirus. Like <laughs> fuck you, man. <laughs> fuck you. You could have sent that in an email. You could have called one person and they could have figured out how to send the email because you probably can't. Like. Fuck, fuck anybody who refuses to recognize that we are not an individualistic society. <laughs> like, that, that that does not exist. The actions that you do do have an effect on others. Like, get your fucking shit together and figure that out so that we can try and return to some sense of normalcy or ideally a better than what we were state. And it's important um, to point out we're not trying to be political. This is a public health crisis. Yeah. So, like we this, mentioned, we this mentioned is not so, a both yeah. sides kind of thing. It's a no. There's one fucking side, and then there's people that are refusing to like recognize facts and medical science and and bullshit like that. And if you see that as pathetic as as um, political, you're a fucking moron, and I don't give a shit about trying to appease you at this point because I'm so tired of just dealing with the pain and agony that those kinds of people are leading t- uh, in this country. Oh, uh, yep. Anger. Oh, right. Yep. There, there. I was like, man, Trevor, I came at this pretty Grr. hot and I did not know that I was like lighting Trevor up on this. So no, no, like, I mean, I, like my, I, my beef. again, it's, 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 it's a, it's, it's a conversation. It's a conversation that needs to be had. And, and it's something that, yeah, like I, I would much rather have the conversation and vent to you guys and any listeners that happen to, to hear this then continue to go day after day of just looking at my phone and just like it boiling up inside of me. So even that, like even regularly talking with people about the stupid shit that we've been dealing with for the last four years, because like I, I, I find myself very lucky that I have a number of podcasts where I can actually still like regularly engage with people. Um, uh, that has been something that like has absolutely been a saving grace in this. But we don't cover everything. We don't talk about everything. So even stuff like this, we haven't talked about at length outside of, you know, maybe a little bit of the uh, like we'll talk about it here and there on the shows or something like that. But um, yeah, th- I mean, this is stuff that is just like welling up inside of me. So getting the chance to discuss it and 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 kind of have these these chats and and feel uh, like realize I'm not a fucking crazy person for thinking these things <laughs> um, when all I see online is people just like trying to defend the other side or whatever. It's like, no, like it's indefensible. Stop it, being fucking idiots. It's it's super important to also point out that like, and this is something that I've been running into recently. So um, like it is important to note that Trevor, you and I live in like you live in Scottsdale, which is in mm-hmm. like, and that's in Arizona. It's a very conservative place. I live in Mesa, Arizona. Mesa, Arizona was at one point named the most conservative town slash city in the United States. Um, It is like there is an incredible amount of conservative people that live here. Um, A lot of my family is very conservative. Granted, a lot of my family, like my sister is a cancer survivor. So she has immunosuppression issues. Um, My brother is a nurse. And like my sister, like another sister of mine is a teacher. And, like, my parents, the moment this stuff started, are on board. Like, luckily, a lot of, like, and it's important to note, a lot of conservative people are being smart and listening about this because they're using common sense. But there is also the fact that, like, we are inundated, like, Trevor and I are inundated with people that we know or people who know people that we know. Um, And so we see on things like Facebook or other just, like, talking to people um, where we are inundated with people, like, really priding themselves off of their quote-unquote individualism to like basically not follow guidelines not follow rules as though there's some sort of like weird like a weird look at like a freedom fighter so so when we're coming at it real hot it's important to recognize that the environment we're in 
is not going to be the environment that a lot of our listeners are in. Um, this like we are in a very different place than you guys are. We are in a place that we are seeing, like we saw the first um, U.S. case of coronavirus was here. Uh, there's been a lot. We we had we, like when we spiked, we were having more cases. And this was like what like a a few days before Florida had like their like. Yeah, spike that blew us out of the water or whatever the but f- when we spiked we were having more cases we were having more new cases than any other country in the world alone like yeah. in 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 uh arizona we had more quick cases than entire countries um and and yeah it was like it was infuriating because like it for me it was infuriating especially because our governor had Complete, like he he's basically just trying to get a job in Trump's cabinet or something because he's just repeating all of Trump's talking points and was willing to shut down the state over the vandalism and stuff from the Black Lives Matter protests, but not willing to shut down the state over public health. And there was a a, a video that went viral a couple of weeks ago of one of our Scotts one of my Scottsdale council members. Oh yeah, out I remember there. that. Oof taking taking off a mask at an anti-mask rally um and basically saying i can't breathe i can't breathe trying to make a joke about black lives matter uh and fuck guy phillips because he's a fucking asshole who's still running for council uh and i i got i sent in my mail-in ballot and made sure to not fucking vote for that asshole um you're lucky like i i I wrote a letter to I, I wrote a letter to like the the mayor and an entire city council basically saying like I've never been more embarrassed to live in Scottsdale and that's saying something um than when like I'm seeing my friends post this asshole and realizing that he's one of my fucking council members um and uh, and shout out to the one representative Suzanne Clapp I believe who uh who replied to my email saying I concur and I have you know called for his resignation um, shout out to her. She's running for mayor. So, you know, uh, I, I, I ended up it's a weird thing because one of the people running for mayor of of Scottsdale was like the father of one of my best friends growing up. So, like, I know the guy. <laughs> I know I know he would be good for the city. So uh, he's got my vote. But also, like, shout out to this person who, you know, recognized that Suzanne Clapp was a dumb piece or that this, shout out to Suzanne Clapp who realized that Guy Phillips is a dumb piece of shit racist anti-mask anti-science person that's trying to make decisions in scottsdale and, and yeah just uh fuck look, the world and, how, and yeah. living in a conservative like bubble fortunately like i'm also in the part of scottsdale that is constantly like that is is consistently and has been consistently for my entire time here um uh because i'm basically like right at the border of tempe um so i have consistently had democrats representing me both in the state legislature and in in um uh, in Congress, how so, lucky like, for you! How exactly? Lucky for I, you. Like I'm, I, I feel like slightly better about that, but yeah, it's, 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 it's agonizing, and it like, there, the last, the 2018 election for us at least gave me a little bit of hope because we turned more purple than we've been in my entire lifetime, uh, in that we have more, we have more congressmen that are Democrats than Republicans, and the Democrat actually won the election. The only reason we have a Republican senator. Uh, in Martha McSally is because she lost, but McCain passed away, so the governor gave um, her his seat. So hope I'm I'm hoping that she loses to Mark uh, Kelly, Mark, American Mark hero. Mark Kelly, Mark Kelly, American hero, astronaut, uh, husband to Gabby Giffords. Who, like, I always look at the shooting of Gabby Giffords as like that's when like a lot of people look at um, uh, was it Newtown. Uh, yeah, the where like that was where the gun debate ended because if we weren't willing to you know do something about five year olds getting shot we were never going to do anything. I have always looked at five year old Gabby white Giffords. Five year old white. I've kids. always looked at when Gabby Giffords got shot. If set if if congressmen and senators weren't willing to do something when one of their own was targeted, um, then they were never going to do anything. So fuck that whole thing too but yeah um yeah here's hoping mark kelly uh, <laughs> uh like kicks the the wannabe senator out of the seat she has stolen 
for so the last I, couple of years. Uh, well, anyway. I mean, I, I think the stolen stolen's. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, yeah, not the, the not position, stolen, but the like position she that, inherited. That, she didn't exactly earn. that that was that was given to her despite losing an election. Yep. Which, uh, by the way, did not does like as somebody who has. Um, so I was part of a focus group. Uh, that at the time I was like, I don't know what this is about. And then there, I realized that they were taking um, people who on certain issues like skew conservative, but then on other issues skew liberal. Um, what, what we once called moderates, but are now just liberal because moderates are just conservatives hiding, like trying to be like, well, I'm not really a conservative. It's like, no, you are. Like the, you move the goalposts, you move the lines. Yeah. Now, now, now I'm some like like now I'm a, a liberal anti-fascist, <laughs> like anti-fascist establishment yeah. person, um, which yeah, I, I was I, like, before, I, but now it's now it's some, like I'm further along the line. Um, yeah, that's I mean even even that like like just hey that's something I miss in quarantine just like sane discourse I guess that's yep. like because because yeah everything is extremes now I remember like I. I remember sitting in one of uh, Kaylee's Twitch chats um, when she was playing Persona Five uh, Royal, and like she went off on a, on like fuck Nanako trying to uh, not Nanako um, uh, Makoto fuck Makoto be, for wanting to be a cop, and I was like, because this was like a week or two before George Floyd or whatever, and I was like, I like. I, I basically pulled, like, not all cops are bastards or whatever, not all cops are bad. And then, like, two weeks later, I'm like, yeah, fucking defund the police because I'm so sick and tired of seeing this bullshit and seeing it happen and all this stuff. Um, so, like, even that, like, I, I'm I'm becoming increasingly radicalized uh, in in the uh, the quarantine-era world. Um, well, we, they, but, I think yeah. a big part of it is um, a lot of people, I think, were afraid that we were going to end up in a world of, like... Um, 1984 like george orwell 1984 and they didn't realize that we we're going to end up into a world that was more like a brave new world where we are just so we are so inoculated by the like pleasures of life that often that we literally will pursue those over like the hard decisions and hard discussions and by quarantine and uh coronavirus we have been forced to like we've had a lot of those stripped away from us and so we can't run away from them anymore. And so we like mm-hmm. people are having to have these hard conversations. Um, like I like I did a couple of things on Facebook that I normally would never do because normally Facebook is not a place that I spend any effort or time in. Um, mm-hmm. But like I I put out a post. I'm like if you are like I'm gonna tell you right now that I support Black Lives Matter. Um, if you have a problem with that, unf- like unfriend me. Like I don't care. Like this is the reality. This is the situation. Either you are for justice and you are for um, like you are for what is what we have to recognize as these foundations were built by people who were trying to create injustice and they will always serve injustice unless we radically make changes or abolish them and find a new way forward. Um, like I, like I'm very much for that. Uh, I've, I've been, it, that was an interesting thing when, um, the like recent spike, uh, recent spike in black lives matter, uh, as a movement and as a kind of like emotional reaction to George Floyd's death, I've been kind of like a lot, a lot of people, and I saw a lot of people going through this process, which is the awa- like, it's kind of like you, I don't want to use the word awakening, because that often gets conflated with being woke, which is not what the situation is, it's that you're just becoming like, becoming so aware of the critical injustices in society and the systemic racism and bias that has been created, you know, and it's not like, and it's not current people's fault that this was created, but it's our fault if we don't do anything about it. It's the complicit nature of uh, intolerance. Um, but uh, I saw a lot of people waking up, to, like having this moment where they're making these realizations. They're like, no, like I understand now. It's like, great. I'm glad you're here. I was there in 2016 when um, Philando Castile was killed by a cop. Um, like that was that was the time that I became very aware and very sensitive to these issues, and because yeah, you and I have talked about that, right? Because um, you, in a past life, were a lot more like <laughs> a gun, gun supporter, right? And and that kind of broke you from the NRA was when, if the NRA really stood by what they actually try and stand by, they would have defended and stood by Philando Castile, and you were like, they didn't, so fuck them, right? Yeah, I mean that that was. Am I, a am I remember that correctly? Yeah, um, yeah. Like, if we really want to talk about it, uh, like, 
<laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're completely going off yeah, the rails on this are, episode, this, so why not? This, yeah, let's, like, a uh, nice thing, it's we a, haven't gotten more than an hour in, so. It's, a, it's yeah. the Patreon episode. This is like the Treehouse of Trust, you know? This is the safe place. <laughs> yeah, like, pretty much. Um, no, like, if let's talk, let's talk about my history as, a, like, a neoconservative teenager. <laughs> no, let's not talk about that. Because teenage, yeah, I mean, yeah, that well, was me being, like, like, I, I, I mean, like, being I think I've joked of, with you, like, yeah. I was, I was in teenage Republicans in high school, uh, and, and my, like, my parents are Republican, and, and so I grew up, like, in that, in that mindset. Admittedly, I was really only in teenage Republicans, because I was crushing on a couple girls that were in teenage Republicans, um, so, you know, thank god i came to my senses and got out of that <laughs> but uh you avoided uh, some, you avoided some karens or who what would become yeah, karens <laughs> yeah yeah a little bit yeah um oh but so anyway like, uh, we, we, we all have our yeah. we all have our pasts <laughs> we all have our past i will say that like i transitioned from interesting gabby giffords was like a big one for me i was like well why did this like why was this mentally ill person allowed to just who confirmed who had been kicked out of school for being mentally ill because he wasn't taking like he was just like he was being erratic and causing problems and was writing very like descriptive, uh, very like disturbing things at his community college in his classes. Like he was like this person. And then he was able to walk through a Bash's parking lot. And here's the thing. This is what dismisses immediately a good guy with a gun is the thing that solves the bad guy with a gun. There were good guys with guns surrounding Ga- Gabby Gifford. She was a like duly elected U S Congresswoman. And she uh, like, and she was surrounded by security, and that didn't matter. Because at a moment, it's like, this dude walked up with a full-on just rifle and just, like, did what he did. And then you, and I was like, I'm really concerned about this, and, like, but I still, like, I'm still a fervent believer in the Second Amendment, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then Newtown, ha- like, Newtown happened. Not Newtown, what is it? Um, the, the murder of the children, the school children. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Well, see, that's uh, like one of the worst things you know, is you have yeah. to like figure out like, well, which one was that? Like, <laughs> yeah, like there's yeah. there's one which, every other month. Like, yeah, Sandy Hook. Yeah, yeah, which, which was Sa- Sandy Sandy Hook Sandy and Hook, Newtown yeah, were, Sandy were the Hook same. And Newtown. Um, yeah. So Sandy Hook was it's, like that was when I realized I was like, like even if like because here's the thing the person who like the the young man who obtained the firearm did so like he did technically obtain it illegally. Mm-hmm. But if okay, so uh, like if that's the case, then like what like what protections are there from? Because it's no longer for me. It's no longer a question of if it's a good guy with a gun or a bad guy with a gun. It's how did this person obtain a firearm? And if there's no protections or protocols to, uh, like I think if you own a gun, you have the right to bear that arm with a responsibility and a duty with to that responsibility to handle it wisely. And if you don't handle it wisely, just like if you do not handle your vehicle wisely, um, you can have whatever opportunities you have with that restricted and taken away. Um, we do that with prisoners. Like, prisoners aren't allowed to buy firearms in, se- in certain states. Um, but at the same... Like, so I still... Like, I'm weird. I still believe in, like, in the process... and like, the concept of the Second Amendment, but we need to restrict... The, the what we need to do is not necessarily restrict people, but rather we need to make sure that people are aware of. We sorry, there's a whole lot of things we need to do. Uh, I, national yeah, database. I, like, oh, we should not I, be getting to the subject. Yeah. It's way too nuanced. And deep, <laughs> I mean, yeah, and it's, I'm it's, not it's definitely to heavy. For it. um, I uh, I appreciate yeah. like the the rationale behind why the Second Amendment exists, but the founding fathers did not envision the guns that we have today, uh, and and the the law has been woefully inept in keeping the spirit of the second amendment alive with the actual like realities of the world. The, if, and if you want to use like the argument of like, well, I mean the argument that, you know, obviously was being thrown around, you know, a lot, but everybody's super quiet now that fucking people are getting kidnapped off the streets and unmarked cars. is like, (laughs) Oh, if, if the, if the rationale was like, this is so we can protect ourselves against an unruly government. It's like, well, you're a, you're fucking not doing anything, but B the government has drones and tanks and, you are woefully outmatched. So, it's, like, it's, it's a bullshit not, argument. But me, anyway, yeah, let's me, let's dive yeah, back yeah. into the world of <laughs> oh, things gosh. we're missing. The calm world of things we're missing in uh, in in the COVID era. So, I, oh, I gotta I see appreciate... my I gotta see my younger brother for the first time since uh, New Year's. Nice. How was that? 
Um, it was super nice. Uh, his wife and their kids are out of town. Um, they are at her brother's house in Florida, where they have like half an acre lot behind them to go play in, and they are enjoying not having being cooped up in an apartment for you know all day every day. So mm-hmm. um, they're off doing that. He had work, so he's been working. Um, and I got to like I'm gonna spend some time with him again tomorrow. Uh, but like yesterday or not yesterday, uh, last weekend, I, uh, got to spend like several hours with them. We, we got food. Um, we like, we were able just to hang out, um, got to hang out with our friend Ryan as, as well. Uh, and it was just like a really cool night. Um, I haven't hugged my brother since January. Like I, like I haven't seen him or hugged him or, or like, mm-hmm. like that, like I haven't, like, I didn't realize how much I'd missed hugging people right um it's 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 an incredible thing like when you said that i was like oh yeah i i understand 100 percent what you mean trevor like that is like being able to just like hold my brother close to me and like you know we because we both had been like recently tested and everything like it's funny because the three people who were hanging out myself and the two others we'd all been tested (laughs) and all negative so we're fine but (laughs) like yeah, at the same time, like, we are still, like, it's it's interesting to see kind of, like, the natural change. Like, you do try to keep distance between yourself and another person just naturally now. Um, it's, it's a weird transition we've made, but being able to, like, hug my brother for the first time in, like, six and a half months is, was, well, yeah, almost seven months is crazy. But at the same time, like, the fact that, like, um, you know, I, I've been, I've been, I have been spoiled because I live with other people. And so I haven't been totally deprived like you have, Trevor. Because mm-hmm. um, I do get to see my, like, two of my nieces and my nephew every day and my brother-in-law and my sister. But, like, the reality is, is that, like, it, it's, there's so many people I didn't realize that I'd missed until I hung out with my younger brother and realized there are so many people that I miss so much that now that I have, like, you know, before the reason was like, well, I'm working, I'm working this job out in like out in North Phoenix. I was living out in Santan, so I had like a two hour commute both ways. Um, like I, I like I had a lot of reasons not to spend time with people. And by the time things come roll around and I move into a new place and like, cool, I can definitely spend time with people. COVID-19 happens. And um, like I haven't realized how much I've missed other people until then. Uh, cause yeah. I, I was in a, like, I'll be the first person to say I was definitely in like a rut. Um, like I was definitely like knee deep in a rut in a, like almost depressive, not depression, but, uh, just not having like a super stupendous time with my job and everything. And then I got a new job, got to hang out with my brother. So like, I've been like, I've been living on cloud nine for the last week. Mm-hmm. Um, let me rephrase that tomorrow afternoon. I will be, have been living on a cloud, <laughs> Uh, like cloud nine for that week um, yeah. because up until I found out I got this job, I was not sleeping like at all. Like I was, was not sleeping well or not sleeping at all. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like the night before I found out I got the job, I was literally so stressed out that I didn't sleep at all. Um, and like, that was crazy. Uh, but that's also another thing. Sleep schedules. What's your guys' sleep schedule looking like these days? Oh, mine's like all over the place. It, they, so like I, uh, it is it has not been uncommon for the last few months for me to um like uh stay up playing games or watching tv or movies or something until like four or five in the morning go to sleep for a few hours then get up and go to work uh, or, and, and and by that i mean like get up roll over grab my laptop off the floor and stay and basically stay in my bed and just work um uh, and, uh, and, you know, maybe instead of like a lunch break, I'll take like an hour nap mid work day or something like that. And then finish the work day, maybe do like another hour nap in the evening and then just kind of like record podcasts or whatever the case may be. So like, yeah, my sleep schedule is completely messed up on my like vacation. Um, the, the person I was with, like we, like she reined me in and we had like a more or less normal sleep schedule. Um, and like that even worked wonders. Like the trip in general was a wonderful, like just break away from 
like not only my norm for the last few months, but like a lot of elements of my norm for the last like five, 10 years, even Um, like I traditionally do not dive into cooking too much. And I'm more like I grab fast food or I go out to a restaurant or, or, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go to Alamo or something and do dinner and a show. Um, And we picked up food and basically just like cooked all week, um, like breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever. Like we just made the food. And, uh, and that was like, even that was just like, a wonderful change of pace for me but yeah in particular like this getting actual like normal sleep w- was very um very rest filled as well um and then i immediately like came back and just fell into the bad habits that i that i have here so yeah not not great my sleep schedule how about you frank no i'm definitely in the uh, the same boat like hasn't been great um if anything like i thought i would be I guess I didn't like necessarily think this, but like I was always so like exhausted and tired all the time because of like going out all the time and then let alone like work and all this other stuff. Like it was always like just minimal time for sleep. So I thought like, Oh, I'll have more time to sleep. My commute won't exist anymore. But it's like, I definitely am in the same boat as kind of like where cam was where I'm like, I haven't been sleeping great. And then the problem I've also been running into uh was like i i'll get up in the morning like you said and i'll grab my laptop and i'll start going to work and then after work like in the afternoon i I'm, i'll just be like tired or like burnt out and I, I got into the habit of like then going to sleep not for like the whole night but basically taking a nap like which would take from like four to any like seven or seven or eight and then mm-hmm. that I think has been really bad for me because like not only am I losing all like my personal <laughs> yeah. time, I also then stay up way too late and I still have to get up at like six whatever in the morning to go to work. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's exactly kind of what I'm doing. And then I also on the weekends I have like the depression sleep where I'm just like I'm not motivated to do anything and I can't go out and do anything. So like I sleep I, I like I make up for it, I guess, probably on the weekends where I just like will you know, spend half the day in bed or something like that. Um, unless there's like a game I'm trying to play or, or something to something to take my mind off of the hellscape of the current world, I guess. Um, but yeah, that like, it's, it's a weird dichotomy of like staying up all night or sleeping all day when I can. Um, I, so yeah, it's, it's a weird, weird time. <laughs> I've been there too. Cause yeah, like all like on Saturday or whatever, like the first day of the weekend or even sometimes on Sunday. Yeah. Like I'll sleep in as much as I can, or even like half the day or whatever. But then like, I, I still always feel bad. Cause like, I'll feel more rested and like better that way. But then I'm like, oh God, I lost my whole fucking weekend. I have to go back to work now. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know. That's, I mean, go ahead. Li- like to, to put it this way. So the animal crossing reset is at 5.00 AM. I have probably been up for more Animal Crossing resets than I've not. <laughs> so, like in the in the four months since that game came out, so that's that is that is where I've been at with my sleep schedule. <laughs> like I will, I'll be playing, or I'll, I'll be like on my phone or something, and I'll be like, oh, it's five o'clock, and I'll like boot up my my Switch and I'll play, and I'll like I'll I would go through and get all my fossils or whatever, and do like all of my morning chores before I go to bed for the night. <laughs> Um, that was, that was very much like my normal experience. So thanks for asking Cam. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm like, that's, I'm like, oh, that's an easy pivot. Let's do that. Um, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, like a much more... it's definitely like s- sleep is definitely something like normal sleep is, is definitely something worth missing right now. Oh yeah. I oh, mean, yeah, also no. I, I think I'll, I'll be honest. I miss driving places. Like, to the point mm-hmm. where, like, I've mentioned it before on podcasts, but, like, I will sometimes just be like, you know, I want to go grab something to eat. I don't know where. And, like, I will drive around, like, the area. Like, I'll hop on the freeway. I'll just drive out. Like, sometimes I'll be mm-hmm. out for, like, I'll be, like, I'll be gone for, like, two, two and a half hours. And I come home, and, like, the, my sister and brother-in-law are like, where did you go? And I tell them, and they're like, why did it take you so long? And I was like, one, lines are long everywhere. Oh, that's another thing. Um, I miss the Canes drive through not taking a half an hour to an hour to get through. That's what I miss. That fire I, So through. I haven't – I hadn't had, like, that big of a problem with it until the time I went uh, maybe Tuesday, I think, or, or, like, sometime, like, earlier this week or basically since I got back from vacation, I went. And it the, the one by ASU um, I went to, and it was the first time they had done what In-N-Out has been doing where they split you into two lines to, like, get more people through – 
because otherwise they were they were blocking traffic basically um and it was the first time i had to deal with that and i was like oh this is this is different um so i can i can very much relate to that one let me tell you about the one that's off stapley and baseline Mm -hmm. the one that's off stapley and baseline not only do have they split the line in half but i i'm telling you right now the turn in lane with the bus stop there Mm -hmm. is 100 percent i have had to be in the turn lane around the corner from it and in line. Yeah. It it's, is it is a traffic surreal. hazard. It is a traffic hazard. I like we should all have been getting tickets and it's <laughs> nuts. And like there are days when it's like I just can't do it, but then there are days where it's like the just like the, the cane the chicken strips are calling me. The sauce. Yeah. And I I, I can't mm-hmm. the sauce is calling me. I can't say no. I have to go. I have to follow it. But what, I, what I've done what is I've stopped, my mind. I've stopped by a Bahama Bucks before I go now. Dude, you guys I'll have those a, I'll have... Those are so good. Yeah. We ha- we have everything here, Frank. But, have you forgotten we are the capital of Team Fat? No, that, you're definitely right, and that's what I miss is because there's so many things there that aren't here, and there's a couple things, but we we did we had a Bahama Bucks randomly open, and I, I, I was addicted. I kept going constantly. This is pre-pandemic, but I was like, oh, my God, it's so good. <laughs> I have no idea what this is, so this is the first time uh, I'm hearing uh, it. Bahama Bucks. It's shaved it... ice, but what they do is they have this thing called oh, okay. the Bahama Rama Mama. And the Bahama Rama Mama is they have Blue Bell ice cream at the bottom of the cup, like the last like quarter uh, okay. of the cup. And then they okay, put yep. the shaved ice on top of it. And so as you're eating it, the flavoring from your I- your shaved ice, and like mm-hmm. the shaved ice itself like melts down into it, and it makes it just like this like incredible sundae at the bottom. And mm-hmm. so I will, I will, I'll pick a medium strawberry cheesecake Bahama Rama Mama on my way to Canes, and I will just like put on like my brother, my brother and me podcast, and just like listen to that while I eat some some delicious shaved ice. And by the time I get to the the window, I'm done with my my shaved ice meal, and now it's mm-hmm. time for my Canes. There you go. Yeah, it's it, it. So a couple of things off that. One, like it's weird because I remember early in the pandemic. I was ordering canes through like DoorDash and they were doing delivery. I don't know why they stopped. Like suddenly I'd, I would go in and be like, I want canes today. And I'd go in and be like, it just didn't show up in the search options anymore. And they just weren't doing delivery it's because orders. The reason anymore. why is because delivery orders were going inside to pick up the order, doing pickup. Mm. Canes yeah. stopped doing inside pickups. Uh, and okay. so delivery mm. drivers would have to start being in the line for drive through. And the delivery yeah. time was so long, people wouldn't do it. It, that does it. That, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense though too, because like we have a Canes over here, and I ordered it uh, like a little bit in even after the pandemic had started, because I would get it. It was close to work, so I would get it at work sometimes, and then I was even even when work from home, I was like ordering it to be delivered. And uh, you're yeah, like I I noticed like they totally dropped off the the app. Like I went to order it like once or twice, and, and it's just like non-existent. Yeah, it's them being um, the... careful because they don't want person to person contact. And yeah, nope. the screens are there to keep you from being able to cough or breathe on the employees, and they all wear gloves, mm-hmm. and they do everything they can not to actually physically touch you, um, which is one yeah. of the reasons why I still stand them, even though they have the most atrocious lines I've ever been in, except for the in and out by State Plan Baseline, which is I don't even know where that line starts, and I don't want to know. I don't want to learn. <laughs> yeah. Like, I saw, I, saw um... it, I saw it go into the, the massive parking lot behind it, and I saw it snake around a couple times, and I'm like, good for them i'm not dealing with that yeah like i said the one at the one at um uh by asu um just like canes there has uh they've sp- split their like they've taken basically like a row of parking that they had and basically turned that into a split line so it's like you pull in and they're like please pick you know please alternate um lines and they just kind of like so they have two lines converging up to the the kind of pivot point um and that's another one where like i've 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 driven up being like, I'm going to go get in and out today. And then I get there and I'm like, no, I'm not going to get in and out today. <laughs> and then I like, and so yep. that's where I end up getting my driving around town things is like, all right, well, let me go and find like another place to eat then. Um, but also on the, uh, the Bahama mama thingy, whatever, um, that you were talking about. Uh, one of the other things I did on, on my little vacation there was, uh, I, we, we handmade ice cream. Um, so we made, uh, coffee stout ice cream which was very delicious. Uh, it was like some dark roast coffee grounds uh, and then uh, a Guinness, basically, two poured things, in for, for flavor and stuff. Two things I hate more than anything else in this world. And like, coffee, so like the co- coffee co- yeah. and like dark boozy I, beer. 
I will love I will both. never drink coffee really of my own volition, but I'm like I'm okay with coffee flavored things, uh, especially if it's like only a hint of the coffee flavoring, which this was. And and when it comes to beers, um, Guinness or dark stouts are probably my preference. I like I I hated during college like I I never drank beer with friends because it was like I hated pale ales and stuff like that. So that was where like I would always default to like a rum and coke or something but when i eventually somebody like bought me an irish car bomb at, at like a cast thing and uh and i enjoyed it i was like hey it turns out i like guinness cool um i will say even, I but will even say, that like i i will say i, I prefer a, a like a stout over like a pale ale or like a like a mm-hmm. lager i mean at this point like i default to a cider like i'll just do an angry orchard Hells, or something yeah. if i if i'm doing a beer like Angry Orchard, or like occasionally I'll do like a Blue Moon if I'm looking for like a different flavor. But if you want like, that citrus, I, get, I feel you. For, for for the sake of like, she, she had a uh, she had a book of like, you know, uh, uh, not I would say like more adventurous ice cream flavors than anything I would be <laughs> like normally accustomed to, uh, and so this was like I was like, well, I can I can manage both of those things, so let's do that, and and so we did that, and it was delicious and and so you know shout out to homemade ice cream and whatever but um uh yeah it was uh it it was definitely like another new experience especially because she also had me make the caramel um which you it's very easy to burn caramel and very easy to mess up caramel and so i was very panicky (laughs) about this i was like okay i don't want to i don't want to burn it i want to screw this up uh and she's like you'll be fine Uh, and and ultimately like my my overly cautious nature managed and we were fine (laughs) Uh, and so, yeah, some some caramel on some uh, nice little coffee stout ice cream was uh, was a delicious like change of pace for uh, for the week as well. So uh, shout out to any of that kind of stuff. Um, one last thing that I wanted to uh, just kind of like touch on there is um, kind of in that that vein of uh, you go like you said, Frank, going out like I absolutely miss like Alamo Draft House uh, oh, in particular. Yeah. Yep. Um, and and especially because uh, the the Alamos here in in, uh, in Phoenix at least all have had to declare bankruptcy. So he, who terrible. knows when theaters open up if they'll actually be able to come back or anything like that. Um, uh, it, since that's like a whole franchisey kind of thing. Um, but like that, like just I was in such a routine of like you know once a week I would go see a movie and and you know grab chicken fingers or pizza or whatever at Alamo and just kind of like enjoy and you know Cameron and I would go see a lot of movies together um I you know was a huge fan of the um uh the movie parties that they do for especially like a lot of the you know a lot of my favorites like Back to the Future or Princess Bride or something like that um and so like I'm you know I enjoy hopping onto Netflix and watching something like I watched The Old Guard or I watched um uh Palm Springs or you know just other ran- I mean, like I watched Princess Bride last week, um, just because I was like, yeah, it's a fun one to to throw on. Because it's a perfect and, film. Um, yeah, exactly. It's 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 a it is a perfect film. Um, and uh, and just yeah, I just I miss like that as a thing to do as a as a like just going out and you know being in that energy like being able to basically kill two birds with one stone. I'm getting my entertainment. I'm getting food brought to me <laughs> um, that oftentimes very good food um and uh and so yeah i I just uh like that's that's one like i know you know amcs are looking to open up or harkins are will eventually looking to to open back up here in uh in town and if they do if and when they do i'm like maybe i'll do it but like even that like alamo had become such like a cornerstone of my experience at this point that i don't know if i'll if i'll go back to movies even when those other places open up if Alamo doesn't open back up out here. It's a special experience. So that's another one I wanted to give a shout out to. Yeah. And I love, like, I love the, the, you know, the carefully catered pre-shows that they would do and stuff. Um, just a, a ton of fun, uh, in the Alamo experience. So that's a really, good and, and like, I was there enough that like a lot of the servers knew me and recognized me when I would come in. Cause I was always wearing like my glasses and stuff. So they would always like, even if they didn't like know my name or whatever, they recognized the glasses, so they recognized that I was there regularly. Yep, it was a kind of a weird thing when that started happening. Yep. No, like I think that was like a great point because other than just like uh, missing the entire like obviously like movie going experience, especially like Alamo being such a special experience, like it it is definitely uh, uh, something that is definitely missed right now, um, uh, especially because like uh, like 
do like you even mentioned with like the pre-show like i feel like yeah like there there was never with going to like other theaters you never wanted to see any of that other stuff you would just show up and like right before it started and just kind of go in and see it but like the alamo especially here like austin is is kind of like where that started to branch out from like um they uh there's a there's multiple of them like all over town and it was like you would go like even like sometimes i would get there with people and we would show up like an hour early because there's like a bar and you could just sit there and like have drinks and talk to people and like eat get food yeah. and just like watch the pre stuff like they would have really interesting things like i know uh with the for the mr rogers movie there they just had a ton of mr rogers content rolling and like i think that, yep. like, that that's awesome like and it's such a special experience and like i am very sad that uh they they have been doing so good at branching out like there's the one in san francisco and they opened one in la and there was yeah. the one in phoenix and like i'm sad that like, like these are getting shut we, down now we had finally just gotten after like a, more than a year of waiting we'd finally just gotten the alamo pass um the alamo season pass mm -hmm. out here which was basically their movie pass thing um and uh and, and i took advantage of it to go see shitty movies like Doolittle do or but I but I also got to see you know good stuff like Emma or uh or Onward before um before uh, everything shut down um and so I was like fully ready to just be out there every week going and seeing you know whatever movies were coming out um to to support that whole program and everything and so yeah it was just another um bummer and I I talked about it a little bit on this week's normal that nerdy site show um that went up this week uh because logan and i were talking about a show that logan loves called i Mer uh, i survived um a japanese i survived the japanese game show yeah and uh and i talked about how like a lot of my exposure to weird japanese game show stuff has probably come from alamo draft house pre-shows because they you know find a way to work a lot of those things into you know random movies and stuff um so it's it's yeah like it has it has exposed me to you know, a lot of just weird things. And then there's also just been surreal experiences like um, an Achievement Hunter animated thing showing up before. I think it was like Spider-Man Far From Home that had like Nick Scarpino in it because they were like kind of funny, had been out there and was, was recording stuff. And they were doing like the opening segment of the Spider-Man game or whatever. And so like the surreal experience of seeing nick scarpino in a alamo pre-show <laughs> having you know had conversations and knowing the guy and stuff um i was just like yep this is this is weird this is absolutely a weird thing so yeah i, I definitely miss that that whole just the alamo experience is something that i miss and and unfortunately we'll probably not get when it comes back because uh, or or it will take you know even longer to come back out here because of everything that uh, that they've had to deal with so and I yeah bummer and while we're still on the like the movie topic as well like i know there's bigger things in the world i know there's a ton going on and there's a lot of things everyone is missing but we 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 have to be very upset that fast and the furious 9 has been delayed an entire year <laughs> true yeah that's yep that, that absolutely is a is a thing like they could have they could have absolutely gone and just cleaned the f up on a, on like a an on demand service or something like that uh, but nope they they kicked out. that and that was that was really one of the first signs like in in weird like retrospect the fact that they kicked it out a year was like okay like you really don't have faith that it's that like we're gonna come back from this anytime soon if if that's how far you're you're adjusting your slate versus like freaking christopher nolan and them moving tenant every you know three weeks or something like that um, well, I mean, that's Warner Brothers making that decision. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I know. But, like, just the, the, the idea of, of how the different mentalities that the studios are, are having in, in their approach to all this. And then, you know, obviously, as, as Cam and I know full well, Disney, you know, kicking stuff like Artemis Fowl to, to, uh, to Disney Plus. Or, you know, on the, on the flip side of that, Hamilton, um, pushing Hamilton up a year and a half to, uh, to make that available to everybody right now was, was a really cool thing. So... Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely going to be a weird landscape for movies when this is all said and done. Especially when we get to the you know, year or two of like just a really slow lull because movies weren't getting made while all this is down. Mm -hmm. um, like that's that's some of the stuff that like we're going to be feeling the effects of all this for years to come because there's just going to be a weird trickle of like, hey, yep, this is this is that period of time where the movies that would have been made during COVID would have come out that aren't coming out now. So yeah, it'd be weird that just like 
the parts of the world are just kind of being shut down oh, and put guys, on hold did you for, guys hear about how, for months. Sorry, did you guys hear about how that Zendaya film got made? No. Um, I uh, I think I've heard about what you're talking about, but no. Like, so yeah, t- the situation the, is this. Uh, Zendaya contacted a director and said, hey, um, I want to make a movie. And they said, and the director's like, okay. And they put together a cast, crew, like everything you need to shoot a movie. They they developed a project, a film project, that would let them basically be isolated. Like it's going to be like, you know, off, like at a house, off the beaten path. Um, you know, it's not going to have any like city shots or any town shots. So you don't need to worry about uh, like filming in public. They quarantined for two weeks the cast to get like the cast and crew together. Mm-hmm. Like in even craft services was quarantined for two weeks before they even started sh- like shooting. Okay. And it's like the, like the, and then two weeks afterwards for like the quote unquote decontamination or whatever. It's like the entire process is super cool, but they showed yeah. that like with enough prep work, you can totally do this, but it, mm-hmm. it yeah, but it, it does require a very specific kind of project and et cetera. So, um, uh, yeah. Super cool. I mean, like even even talking about that, like I will give unfriended shit to the day I die. <laughs> but like that is absolutely the kind of movie yeah. that could be made right well, now. Uh, they you can make unfriended yeah. three. Uh, I was going to mention that. Host. Yeah, it's yeah. on Shutter, and it, from what I hear, it's actually it basically is just like a way better version of Unfriended. But they made the entire thing like in Zoom, which is cool. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like one of the things that I would love if it was on anything other than Quibi is that they made like that a whole bunch of celebrities in quarantine made um, shot for shot remakes of the of the of scenes from The Princess Bride and they stitched it all together. You don't have um, to. You don't have to have I've Quibi seen... to find that. You're good. Oh, oh yeah, I know. It, it's, my joke was, well, I look forward to seeing this when it's uploaded to YouTube. Yep. And sure enough, like the, I, that is where I've watched a lot of the the clips and scenes from that is has been like, yep, here's here's the YouTube you know version of the man in black fighting Inigo and then Fezzik and then Vicini, like seeing that and seeing like Patton Oswalt as Vicini was wonderful and delightful. And, um, it being, uh, uh, Carl Reiner, like the last thing he did right before he passed, um, being like the, the grandfather, um, was a, just a, a beautiful little, like touching heartfelt thing, especially given that Rob Reiner directed the film. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, like I, I like, th- I, I, I love, the creativity that is coming out and, and those kinds of things that are, that are being made in this. Um, you know, if it's, if it's horror kind of stuff, it's definitely, it's still not going to be like my jam, but you know, kudos to them and shout out to them for figuring out how to make us st- make and tell a story in the zoom, you know, uh, uh, uh genre basically. <laughs> um, uh, Trevor, it's, it's you, one of those things. Yeah. Did you, Go ahead. Oh, this happened yesterday. Never mind. Ignore me. Um, okay. I, I just found like somebody like shared an article about like the, um, the train fire over the over Tempe Town Lake. Oh, no, I hadn't heard anything. No. Oh, okay, yeah. So apparently, a uh, train got derailed and uh, caught on fire, and uh, like maybe avoid tap water for a while. Okay. Um, <laughs> is there like the thanks, area that we live? C- f- thanks. As I as I've drank uh, a bottle and a half that I filled up right before the show. <laughs> um, good, good, good heads up. Uh, and I'm sure I'm fine. I mean, you're in Scottsdale. Uh, your your water's gonna be fine. They don't yeah, they don't they, don't, they, they don't let we're bougie. Yeah, they don't let regular people we, water into Scottsdale. Yeah, we we don't drink that Tempe Town Lake water. Um, uh, to to that point, um, it's it's interesting because we you know obviously with our our derailed kind of conversation around um uh facebook earlier one of the things uh so i was getting like errors on my my phone from the facebook app um uh, a few weeks back so i just was like all right fuck it and just installed the facebook app and have not been compelled to like reinstall it or anything like i still have messenger so i still can like chat with people but not having facebook as part of the like instagram twitter facebook kind of repertoire of like apps that i just mindlessly go through for you know hours on end sometimes um has been wonderful and like i've not missed it like and at this point like the only things i was really actively using facebook for would be like oh i'd go in and check on a friend or two or i'd go in and check like the what's good games facebook group or something like that but not doing and like i've i've still gone on to facebook a little bit but i have to be like at a desktop to do it or something um and it's just been like hey turns out i don't really miss that platform at all or the bullshit that is, you know, constantly just shared on that platform. So, 
Yay. Yay for not yay for things that I'm not missing in quarantine. <laughs> Facebook. Um anything else? Any last uh, items you guys want to touch on or or cover before we uh, wrap up here? Uh the last one I'll give a shout out to just in terms of things we're missing. It does kind of still tie together with like the bar scene. But it's like going to shows, like, you know, just seeing, uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to just yeah. be generic, but like just seeing bands, like that's also a huge thing here. Yeah, you, yeah, you're, you're much more like a, a music goer than, than certainly I am. Uh, so yeah, I can, I can appreciate that. Um, like, like for you, it's, it's music for me. It's like, yeah, I miss going out to the theater and seeing like live theater, seeing friends on stage and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I can, I can fully appreciate you know the the live show experience not happening yeah i mean even like kind of funny basically is i mean they said this probably a few months ago now um but like they were like yep we're like even if you know the world opened up we we know people aren't going to be comfortable coming out here so we're not going to do our studio tour um this year so like the fact that um this is like the first year where there just wasn't any kind of funny kind of like community meetups is just a, a big old bummer yeah. Yeah, because that was going That would even be like the other thing I miss is like PAXs and especially like just the community yeah. events and you know even like there probably wasn't gonna be like a KFL necessarily, but just like you know kind of funny live RTX like all the things that kind of bring us and everyone else together. Like I definitely miss those. Yeah. But I guess it is just gonna be like when we do get to go do the studio tour and we do get to do stuff like that. It is just gonna be like crazy and you know everybody will be yeah. stoked to be kind of back together finally. Yeah, all, all, all of those hugs are going to be the best damn hugs. Yeah, because that um, was what I, I thought of when yeah. you guys were talking about kind of missing that. I, I definitely uh, kind of even understand that as well. And, like, I feel like that's what the, one of the biggest things, too, is, like, that was our community's thing. So it's like I, I can't wait to have that back again when you just get to go around and kind of hug everybody and, you know, see what's going on with them. <laughs> yeah. Um, how about you, Cam? Any, any final uh, uh, misses for you? You know, I think one of the biggest things is that I technically owe you Portillo's. <laughs> and until <laughs> this clears up, I'm just going to have that debt hanging over me. That's that's fair. I, I was actually just thinking, like, because uh, one of my, like, the last little shout out I was going to give was uh, sushi. Yeah, um, in yeah. particular, like, I, I can I can still get sushi. Oh, shoot. Uh, and yeah, I, no, I, sushi. I might still go get sushi. But, like, I had uh, a sushi, like, one of my favorite sushi places in Phoenix um, is, is like, right around the corner from my office downtown. Uh, and so the fact that, like, I haven't been there in uh, since, you know, early March, I'm um, like, I miss, I miss that. Um, but also um, ramen, uh, the, our, mm -hmm. our occasional ramen hangs uh, were a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, just, like, so, like, the... When I do Sunday like my food Trevor. orders and stuff, I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing, I, I do like the, the, uh, I do like fast food. I have like my little rotation of fast food places that I go to, which Portillo's is admittedly still in that repertoire. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it, but a little bit outside of that, you, the, the stuff that I would, you know, treat myself with every now and then I just don't do anymore. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, you do owe me Portillo's. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for reminding let the, me. <laughs> let the record show. Yeah. I don't even remember what that was from. What did oh, I, what did I win? I, Portillo's it's Mion? It's because I... It was, you, you predicted something stupid. Right? It was the was NAC 3 prediction. Oh, yeah. It was, oh, okay. That's right. It was the, PS, the, the PlayStation NAC 3, whatever. Yeah. I, I love that the NAC 3 prediction is considered stupider than Mark Cerny murdering a man on stage. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> I, was because no, it wasn't. It wasn't even. It wasn't even NAC three. It was. I, it was that you thought they were going to talk about teraflops, and I said teraflops will not be mentioned, and we had our portillos bet around that. Oh, was that, was that what it was? That's, okay, that's that's, what, that's it was. what it was. That's yeah. It was. It was that the PlayStation event was going to talk about teraflops, and I was like, that is so innately tied to Xbox. It's not going to come up there. That's not going to happen. I, and, so and I, I was like, and I, I think it will. I think that and was because yeah. it was. It was your yeah. Your prediction was that they'll say uh, teraflops, and I was like, side bet. Portillo's teraflops will not be said. That's right. I remember that. Um, okay, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, no, I yeah. think no. We, you were we just got there. you, we you got were there, just yeah. oh, that's right. I got a point taken away for it. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I lost. We, we, I literally lost we, because we deducted I, a point because of the knack prediction. That's right. That's what it was. Like completely. Like that still like is going to stand as like the greatest asterisk, like asterisk <laughs> in like prediction history. Um, yes. Yes. Clearly, because the predictions we make are so important. <laughs> 
<laughs> like I'm just saying, like when like when we are all dead and archaeologists are going through it, this is going to be a major point of contention whether or not like the the point deduction does stand in the official record. I'm just going to say that. predictions predictions at that nerdy site so important we didn't even do them for the Xbox event. <laughs> so, yep, good good call there. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like food like food with friends is is certainly one of the definitely one of the up there things. Uh, so I look forward to us uh, getting together again sometime when we can and when it's safe to do so and having some Portillo's or Chipotle or whatever, whatever the case may be there, Cam. And, and yeah, Frank, I, I, I like at this point, like I was excited about the prospect of, you know, flying back out there for, um, for like a, a an anniversary stream te- with the team uh, in November. But, you know, given the, the state of the world, that's probably not going to be feasible or happen. So, uh, I, I absolutely also miss, you know, not being able to see you guys um, uh, with any kind of regularity. Like, uh, you know, I, I would have come out for RTX, probably wouldn't have bought an RTS. I, I think my, I mean, my plan even was I'll fly out and hang out with you guys for, for RTX weekend just because people will be around. But I don't, I, after going to RTX last year and just being like, I don't really care about any of this, I was basically just going to, like, piggyback off of RTX weekend to go come see you guys well, in Austin. The, and that was a plan for... Obviously, that didn't happen. That that was a plan for me yeah. as well. Like, the, the big plan was a lot of us were going to be doing that, just, like, bumming around Austin instead of, like, going to RTX yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, no yeah, offense no, that, to, like, yeah. no offense to RTX, but I would have done the same thing. That's what I did last year, too. I don't even think I had a badge. I just, like, I maybe went for, like, one day, but it's, like, I, I much prefer to just hang out and see everybody. Oh, yep. it's, like, uh, like yep. even though I enjoy a lot of Rooster Teeth, like, like Rooster Teeth-owned content... Uh, I'm not the biggest like art like Rooster Teeth person like fan um, like I don't I don't need to meet well it's that's actually not fair at all though because like I think back to it, it's like I've met actually everybody that I kind of wanted to meet at Rooster Teeth mm-hmm. just by just like going to kind of funny stuff well it, like I'm, it, I've yeah. I met I've met the Funhouse guys I've met uh, Jeff who like despite being like just like a kind of wonk like wacky guy is possibly one of the smartest men in internet business. Um, he's super nice too. Yeah, he's just like the dude literally like the dude literally predicted and sat on Let's Play as like a name for like a business and a, like a YouTube channel. Like dude dude's really like has a, a good foresight. Um like I've met pretty much everybody I would want to meet from that's not true actually I would want to meet Blaine. Blaine's the oh, one he... person I've never met from Rooster Teeth that I really want to meet. Dude, I love him too. I, he, just I've because, met him before, and he's like, he's so awesome. Just because I want to, I just want to tell him, how dare you? How dare you be that attractive in that big of a fat suit? Um, because he did, he wore a fat suit for like a like a bit, once upon a time, and he just looked way too good, like way too good. He was way too good looking of a fat guy. Anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. those are those are some of the things we miss about. Uh, just the world around us uh, in this COVID era. Accosting so, uh, internet celebrities in person rather than over the internet. Yes. Exactly. And and each other. Accosting each other in person uh, uh, is, is absolutely up there. So, you know, hopefully we'll get back to that someday. Um, at, at the rate we're going, not going to be any time here in 2020. So fuck this year and, and you know, let it burn in hell behind us. Um, but until then... Uh, Holy we're, shit! We're you guys, keep I have to ask you a question. I have to ask you an important yeah. question. Okay. Did we ever like deal with the Australian wildfires, or are they still going on? I think those are. I out. mean, I, f- I feel like they got put out because I feel like with everything else, we'd still be hearing it. We like. Would we? The, it it has come up enough of like, hey, remember when this year started with Australia on fire? We would still we would hear, in the in I guess in the same vein of like you get the daily updates of it's been X number of days since Briona um, uh, was shot and, uh, and fucking arrest people or, or whatever. Um, I feel like we would still, we, it would be included in the conversation somewhere that, Hey, Australia is still on fire. Everybody. But like, can we Um, say 100% like guarantee? I mean, no, I can't, I can't, I can't say for 100% a goddamn thing. Like, I don't know where murder hornets went. I don't know what happened there. (laughs) They're still here. That was a prequel. Yeah. They they're like they're it's, like oh yeah. yo oh sorry we're ahead of schedule we're supposed to be here for 2021 not 2020. Mm, yeah. Uh, who knows? Uh, yeah. The, I, so yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Australia is is at least contained 
if not completely out, but I don't know. Maybe maybe they are still burning, and if so, our thoughts are with you, Australia. Sorry they weren't with you, you know, up until this moment. Our thoughts are goddamn everywhere this year because they're being pulled in every fucking direction because the whole world is on fire, not just Australia. So, anyway, this was a... <laughs> Maybe not the catharsis I was hoping for, but like ultimately, I love getting to sit down and talk to you guys. So thank you for helping me process through some of this shit because clearly I, I had some stuff that I needed to get off my chest. So uh, thank you for uh, for sitting down with me for this episode, this Patreon early access episode of that Nerdy Sight Show. Uh, let's go around the table. Uh, uh, obviously, we're not, like this. This these shows exist in a weird like time bubble. So I don't know if we have anything in particular to plug, but uh, you can follow Cameron at Rev. Cabot, anything you want to give a shout out to there, Cam? Uh, yes, I do want to give a shout out to um, my local, uh, both my local Chipotles. Uh, 100% every time. I love you folks. You guys are troopers and you're putting up with some some really hard times and I love you and um, thank you for the extra fajita peppers. Nice. Yeah, I've been, I, my, my go-to order at Chipotle these days has been like uh, either burrito or burrito bowl, depending on like what, <laughs> depending on if I want to eat with a fork or not, which uh, is is often very heavily influenced by what is the state of my beard. Uh, <laughs> as I'm like, if I if I've got beard, I don't want to I don't want to do burrito because I'm just gonna get like sour cream and guac and stuff all up in the beard. So I'll switch it to a bowl. But now that I'm like more clean shaven because I shaved before my trip and stuff, I was like, yeah, I can do burritos again. Um, but I've been doing that and. Uh, and uh, uh, two Mexican Cokes and a soda. So I take the Mexican Cokes to go, and I basically have those to, like, feed my, my uh, caffeine addiction um, until the, the next Chipotle trip, basically. There you go. Uh, and, and, I, and I had, like, I, so I had a, a Coke. I had one of them for, uh, for like, my lunch today. Nice. Uh, so I'm like, I'm out again. Maybe. So after we get off this call, my avenue is like, do I do sushi or do I do Chipotle? <laughs> I got Chipotle. Which one's it gonna be? I get a Which salad. one's it gonna be? You when I go to, when I go to Chipotle, I get a salad. Yeah. No. That's fair. It, it, to each their I, own. I'm saying it like a like oh, I'm just getting the salad, but like the salad's just like everything else there. It's delicious. Yeah. Um, that's the yeah, joke. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Chipotle because yeah. they've been great through this whole thing, and and hopefully they're absolutely taking care of their people. Um, uh, every every time I go in, I, I'm pleased to see. Um, you know, everybody wearing masks and then them enforcing, you know, everybody's got to wear masks and all that stuff. So, uh, Frank, you can follow Frank at Irrelevant Jokes. Anything you want to give a shout out to, Frank? You know, I'll back, I'll back the Chipotle support. Like, I've been a supporter of theirs for a while, and you're definitely right. Like, I've been in there a, a few times uh, since the, uh, the pandemic. I actually ordered it tonight. Um, and uh, while uh, they, they're definitely, like, following all the procedures, like you said, and even social distancing, um, and even just as a quick aside before we leave here, too, I got conv- I, I was teetering on if I should buy that bug snacks vinyl that they put out like last week. And I was like, uh-huh. I was really like, ah, I just don't know if I want to spend the money. And I told my friend about it and he goes, you spent more than that on Chipotle. And I was like, fuck, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> and so I ordered it. I, I got yeah. both. I got Chipotle and I got the record. So I'm just living my best life for there, this week. <laughs> there you, there you go. Treat yourself. I mean, like, like part of it is like, I was looking at my finances and stuff and I was like, I can do this this trip to you know Sacramento and and like I'm still like even with like my pay cuts and everything that I've had to deal with from work I'm like I'm doing fine financially because I'm not going out to you know the movies every every few weeks I'm not going to to see theater all like all the the other extracurricular activities that I was doing that was spending a lot of my money on I'm not doing so I have like more disposable income than I anticipated um, and. Obviously, since I'm not going to be going to Seattle for for PAX West or, you know, San Francisco for a kind of funny thing. It's like, well, there's there's even more money that that I would have spent elsewhere this year um, that that I can basically throw into, you know, a game another game I want or something like that. So shout out to the the weird financial dynamic of the pandemic. If you are, you know, of course, fortunate enough to not be thrown into unemployment or something like that if you are you know absolutely deal with what you got to deal with and that sucks i'm so sorry but um yeah it's it's i i'm i'm definitely hypersensitive and aware to the fact that i'm very blessed in that regard i guess um 
but yeah, I, I, and, and I, you know, I will also, you can follow me at Trevor J. Starkey. I will also give a shout out to Chipotle, especially because like the first, you know, month and a half of, of this, like up through May, they were doing like free delivery and stuff. So it was like, as somebody who had never done like the DoorDash Grubhub kind of thing prior to any of this, um, like in that first month and a half where I was like, oh, like this is serious. I'm going to absolutely try and stay home as much as I can. I was getting delivery basically every night or every other night or something like that. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, shout out to, to them for, you know, uh, accommodating that for as long as they did. And, you know, even now it's like it's still very manageable delivery fees if I do delivery or if I go takeout, but I also, you know, uh, do like I've been doing consistently 30 plus percent tips yep. on, on any of the orders I've been doing. Cause I'm like, you know, fuck them. Yeah. They, they are absolutely out there, you know, doing, doing the stuff I don't want to do. So I'm going to, you know, compensate them a little bit more than I normally would if I can. So um, I, I'm totally with so yeah. with you there because like I'm like kind of like you said too. Like I'm fortunate enough to be like work from home and still have my job and everything like that. And so like the and, and my even expenses are a little bit down because of the same reason. And the only thing I've been legitimately like putting money in or like wasting money on is just ordering food probably too much but then on the same flip side to that i'm always like tip the driver and then sometimes you even have the option to just like tip the restaurant and i'm just like hey like you guys are out here doing like great work and it's a crazy time right now but i just mean like i try to support and give back if i can (laughs) yeah well, you can follow all of us over at That Nerdy Site, and you can check out thatnerdysite.com for all of the latest content. Uh, in particular, uh, there was a myriad of uh, Hamilton podcasts if you want to go listen to any of our D-plus show stuff for uh, for a good long period there. By the time this goes like to the wide public, those will probably have like wound down, but uh, as of right now, I've recorded over 12 hours of Hamilton chats uh, over five different episodes, So, uh, and i still got like a few more that I want to sit down and do, so um, plenty of that. If Hamilton is your thing, you can go check out any of that. If you liked what you heard, please rate, review, like, subscribe, share the podcast with your friends, all that fun stuff. And if you aren't already supporting us on Patreon, you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash site. If you are supporting us on Patreon, thank you so much. You, of course, get uh, early access to episodes just like this one. So we uh, very much appreciate you and your support. Uh, thanks for helping us kind of keep the... Uh, the costs uh, of, of that nerdy site at more or less a break even. So I'm not, you know, pouring a crazy amount of my own money into making all these different podcast feeds uh, work for us. So uh, thank you for all that. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you, audience, for listening. As always, stay nerdy and be good to each other. <laughs>